Welcome to Office 2010 video project number 10. Hey, in this video we are still studying Word. And in this chapter we're going to eventually talk about business letters and letterheads. But the first couple videos in this chapter I want to talk about things like Word tables, tabs, objects, themes, and print. So we're going to start off this chapter with five really short videos. This first video is about Word tables. So I'm going to go ahead up and open up a blank Word document. I'm going to hit F12, which is Save As. And as we've done so many times already in this class, we're going to save it to our class notes. So Highline Winter 216 Class Notes. And we're still studying Word, so I'm going to click there. Where do you want to save it? There it is. What do you want to call it? Word, ta Word Tables and Excel tables. We're actually going to compare and contrast Word tables and Excel tables. And then I'm going to click Save. <clears throat> All right, the first thing is uh, Word, how do you insert a table? Well, what is a table? Well, sometimes in Word, you are writing paragraphs like research papers, but other times you have a list of items or you have uh, some things you want to organize pictures and words, and tables are very handy. Insert, and tables are quite easy. Wow, look at that. This is a live preview. You can see how easy is it. If I want four columns, five columns, six columns, and three rows, I can just click like that, and there I have my table. Notice these are non-printing uh, characters. If I Control shift 8 to turn those off or go back to the Home uh, tab uh, and use the button there, Control shift 8 that means a cell. Now before we look at when you want to use a Word table and when you want to uh, actually create your table in Excel and then copy and paste it into Word. Uh, we want to look at the mechanics of a uh, uh, Word table. S similar to Excel, there are columns and there are rows. The intersection of a column and a row is called a cell. Now, Word tables can have words, pictures, etc. And actually, I'll, I'll give you a hint right now. If you ever have numbers, and in particular, if you're doing calculations on numbers, you'd never use a Word table. You do it over in Excel and then uh, copy and paste over here. Okay, so each one of these cells can hold uh, whatever. You can actually put pictures, text, uh, bulleted lists, um, uh, and things like that. Now, I'm going to click right at the beginning here. And again, we're talking mechanics. What is tab? Oh, tab moves forward. Shift tab moves backwards. Now we're going to see this a lot. Remember in dialog boxes so far and later when we get to Excel, tab always moves forward and shift tab mo moves backwards. Uh, also that works in most websites. So in a table, shift goes forward, tab goes backwards. Now what in the world? What if you really wanted a tab? You then have to use control tab. Notice that non-printing character says, I just did a tab. By the way, we'll talk about tabs in great detail in the next video. I'm going to control Z to undo that. Again, still uh, the mechanics. We could add a new line. Notice, uh, let's talk about, um, actually, one other thing. What if you wanted to type uh, a word, the, and what happens if you hit enter? Enter. Wow, that's really different than Excel. In Word, when you're in a cell, when you hit Enter, it adds a new paragraph. Right? That's very different. I'm going to hit Enter again. Still, these are the mechanics of how to use a table. When we get over to Excel, we might as well just open up Excel right now because we are going to eventually uh, do some things and compare and contrast Word and Excel tables. I'm going to click on my little shortcut, Open Up Excel. I'm immediately going to hit F12, and I'm going to navigate. Notice if we were in Word and I opened up a new, uh, created a new file, it would have remembered. But now that we're in a new program, Excel, it doesn't know where we want to save it. The default is Documents. All right, so I'm going to click there, Highline, Winter 216, Class Notes. And we're definitely saving this to Word. We're not studying Excel yet. We're just going to save it to Word. Oh, I can see I already have one file we created uh, earlier in the class. I'm going to click here, and I'm going to type 
word and oh no 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 a oh, word tables now I'm gonna actually do so I'm gonna click this and I'm going to backspace now am I allowed to save a file with the same name in the same folder because we already created a .docx I'm gonna hit tab here yes and the reason why is because this is a different extension we're gonna have two files named the, the same thing but one's an Excel file and one is a Word file I'm gonna click Save let's just compare and contrast I'm gonna type the word the enter okay so it goes down to the next row in Excel whereas in a word table it adds a new line I'm gonna control Z to undo that now let's talk about the different cursors uh, this cursor right here means hey I'm gonna highlight the whole column this white cursor just as we saw in the selection bar to highlight a whole paragraph if you're in a word table uh, you have a word table right there you click that and it highlights the whole row um, now what about highlighting the cell and again sometimes it's tricky you can see I have that my uh, selection cursor bring it really close and that cursor right there that diagonally pointing one that highlights just the cell and sometimes you want to do that because you want to align or add some fill or do some formatting add bold right here's still another cursor right there that cursor is the change the column width cursor wow check that out here and we can come down here and see this cursor right here this is change the row height by the way that is really hard to do in Excel one advantage again the reason you use word tables uh, is when you have words and text the other great reason is if you have unusual um, configurations of cells just like that um, that's uh, extremely hard to do over in Excel sometimes merging cells is easy but getting weird sh shaped cells that don't match up because it means this column is a different width as uh, than that one so if you have a situation like that you're organizing some data or uh, you have a list of items uh, word tables really beat Excel in that regard all right uh, a couple other uh, things this right here means you can move the table you can click it actually highlights the whole table but you can click and move I'm gonna control Z still another couple things were uh, mechanic wise if you want to insert a column you would highlight it and then right click right click I, I right clicked up here right click the thing I have the uh, column selected right click and sure enough it says insert and I'm gonna say wow this is cool I can insert a column to the left or the right I could also actually for that matter right you don't have to highlight the whole thing you can right click insert and boom there's all sorts of options Wow rows cells or uh, columns so quite convenient let's go ahead and insert a column so now I have an extra column and that's very handy because sometimes the original plan uh, changes and then you need an extra column here uh, a couple more things for just mechanics let's highlight these two cells and now I want to right click and there's a merge uh, right click let's highlight these four right click and merge again you start getting into uh, unusual patterns of cell construction that's just really hard to do in Excel um, now one last thing mechanics wise what about split I love this we can right click and split and then it asks you how many columns I'm gonna say two. remember that's the uh, cell we just did right there click OK Oh, that is so cool there's no right click split in Excel you actually have to do really bizarre things you have to merge and then uh, not split above all right uh, now let's try something we got this unusual table here I'm going to uh, click right here and uh, actually I'm going to click right here and hit enter I want to insert another table insert table just uh, like four by four and then I'm going to type Jan tab Feb tab 
M-A-R. April. I hope I got my months wrong. Uh, right. <laughs> I think January, February, March, April. Okay. Whew, I got them correct there. Now, and then you could uh, come down here and, you know, have a schedule. And I want to type some things here. Uh, get done. I'm just going to type some things. I copy that. I'm going to control V, tab, control V, tab, control V. Now watch this. When you get to the end of the table and you hit tab, what happens? Oh, that is so convenient. And then I can continue on my way. Tab. So that's also a very convenient aspect of uh, Word tables. Now I want to go over to uh, Excel. And I want to make a little table, January, February, March. And I just want to show you, in cases where you have numbers and calculations, it's obvious we should use Excel and copy and paste. But if there's other situations when you have uh, patterns like January, February, March, or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or quiz one, quiz two, quiz three. It might be easier to do it over in Excel. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to save this. And um, we're going to go over to Excel. I'm going to do Alt-Tab, and I'm holding Alt-Down, and I, now I'm hitting Tab when I see the blue box around the program I want. I let go. <coughs> I'm going to, excuse me. I'm going to click in A1 and type J-A-N. I'm going to type uh, use the keyboard shortcut Control-Enter. Control-Enter just puts the thing in the cell and keeps the cell highlighted. And because I immediately want to do something to the cell here, I, I chose that instead of hitting enter. Now I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to hold my control key and roll the uh, wheel on my mouse. And now right here in the corner, that little black box is called the fill handle. This is called the selection cursor. But when you move your selection cursor towards the fill handle, boop, it turns into a little crosshair. By the way, that cursor is not it. That is the move cursor. We've already seen that in Word. If I click on that and drag, it moves it. Control Z. But what I want is this one. It's a little crosshair. Now, Bill Gates called it a uh, crosshair. I like to call it an angry rabbit. All right. So you, when you see your angry rabbit, you click, which means left click on the fill handle, fill handle. Angry Rabbit, click and drag. It is programmed to uh, notice patterns, uh, like uh, January, February, March, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It will increment dates and, and all sorts of amazing things. And we'll study that over in Excel. Now I want to use my selection cursor and click in A1 and simply drag. I drag down here. I let go to row 5. Now I want to come up to here to borders and select all borders. Uh, and then I'm going to come up here and highlight this, and I'm going to add some formatting. That's the fill. That's the bucket. We pour the paint into the cell. I'm going to go up to the font. The letter A tells me this is going to format the letters. I'm going to click there. Now I'm going to just leave it just like this. Uh, we haven't really started to study Excel yet. All I want to show you is a great trick. Imagine you had created this beautiful table over here, or it was a table filled with budget numbers and there was calculations. The idea here in this video is just to see how to copy and then paste it over here in Word. Now we're going to do this two ways. Now I've highlighted, now I'm going to use Control C. You notice the dancing ants are uh, dancing all around. I'm going to Alt Tab. And now what happens if I Control V? Control V. Now that looks just like a word table and you can tell those non-printing characters. But I got to show you a, just an amazing trick. Sometimes you have a table and you want uh, over in Excel um, and you want to literally import it as a table, you just control V. But what if you didn't? What if you not only wanted it to look uh, alt tab, you want it to look just like this? But you also want it to automatically update. So as I add uh, things here, it would automatically update in Word. Boy, wouldn't that be cool. So now I still have the dancing ant, so it means it's still copied. I'm going to go up to Pay Special, and this works in 2010. Right here, these great new icons. Look at this one. It says Link and use destination style. I don't want that one. Linked and keep source formatting. I'm going to click on that. And now I have this, um, actually, uh, let's go test it. Let's go back over here. 
I'm going to um, type stuff, control enter, and then copy it over. Notice when I do that, using my, uh, again, my angry rabbit and fill handle, there's no, it doesn't know what to do with stuff, so it just copies it. Whereas here, it thought, it interpreted that you wanted to increment the months. Now I'm going to Alt Tab and go over here. Look at that stuff. It's linked. And one way you can tell is if you right click this linked object, you can see it says update link. Now I want to do one other type of uh, link. I want to highlight this, Control C, Alt Tab. And right here, I want to go up to Paste Special. And now I want to, I don't see, there's, I'm looking for linked and paste a picture. I don't see it, so no problem. I'm going to go to Paste Special. And this is the way it would look like in earlier versions. All right, now here's the trick. Paste a link, don't forget that. And then uh, paste a Microsoft Excel worksheet object. That'll bring it over as uh, looking just like it did in Excel. So boop, boop, and then I'm going to click OK. So now it looks just like uh, a picture in essence. Now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to change the color, Alt-Tab to jump over here. Maybe change it to yellow. Ew, yuck, that needs some black. Alt-Tab, and sure enough, it is now linked. Those tables are linked. And again, this is just a kind of silly how-to video. You would use this uh, like when you have a budget over in Excel, and it's updating regularly, and you have a letter about the budget. Or guess what? This also works in PowerPoint. So we uh, talked a little bit about Word tables, a little bit about uh, linking from Excel. One last thing, and that's going to involve saving and closing. Saving, I'm Control S, Control S for save and close. Now, oh, I don't have, when I guess I close Windows Explorer. Window E, that's too bad. I did not mean to do that. I'm going to navigate all the way back to Word. Now, I'm going to sort in Windows Explorer using the name. So these are right next to each other. These are now linked. These two files are talking to each other. If you ever take this file and delete it, it will not be able to talk to it. If you ever take this and move it, like this is on a jump drive, right? If you were to take this and put it to the, uh, move it to the hard drive and keep this on the jump drive, and take the jump drive out and go somewhere else, it wouldn't be able to talk to each other. All right, I want to see. Uh, what happens when we open this, because links are handy when you have two files that need to talk to each other. I'm going to double click and open this. Um, isn't that just great? Microsoft programs these. Uh, Excel has stopped working. I'm going to say close the program. Okay, you see this uh, message. It says the document contains a link that may refer to other files. Do you want to update? Um, I'm going to go ahead and you get to choose. I'm going to say yes because that's why I linked them in the first place. And so now they're updated. If you ever have trouble or want to see the list of linked items in a Word file, you go up to File. This is the backstage view. And then over here, we have Related Documents, Edit Links to Files. And so I'm going to click on that. And there it is. We have two of them. It tells us the source file and the, the location. You could update now. The uh, key is if you change the location and they're not talking anymore. Well, first off, you could break the link. Sometimes you're done. You don't want it. You don't want to be bothered with that anymore, so you could break the link. But change source. All you would do is take this and navigate to where the new Excel file is located. Double click it. And uh, that's how you'd reconnect them. I'm going to close that. I'm going to close this. I'm going to um, escape to get out of that. Again, the, the deadly move for this new backstage view in 2010 is if you click this, oh, they didn't plan that out very well. It actually tries to close the whole document. I'm going to say cancel. 
So again, how do you get out of this? You can use the exit or click escape. Just don't click that one right there. All right. Um, anything else about uh, tables? Control S. Um, that's it for this video. That was just a how to. Later, we'll use a table in our business later and do some typing and uh, things like that. All right. See you next video.